Hi guys, hope you're well. Um, so this is a quick video really just to show you uh, a, a method that I've come up with for creating absolute bulletproof bodies on flies. Um, really useful for creating real heavy jig back type flies, caddis patterns um, that uh, will get down very deep on, on urine infant type rigs uh, and help take other flies, perhaps smaller and uh, more natural looking patterns down to the riverbed with them. Really useful if you're fishing incredibly fast water or if you've got real deep water in front of you and the fish are holding uh, so deep that uh, traditional tungsten patterns can't get down to them. Um, so this is a method that I, I kind of came up with um, having come across some lead weight powder basically that carp anglers use. So the carp guys will go to um, extreme lengths to disguise their lead weights on their rigs from the carp, um, carp being particularly fussy. Um, so they use different types of powders, different colours, um, which is basically like a plastic compound that they melt onto their leads and it, when it dries or when it, um, when it cools, it goes absolutely rock hard. And in this case, I'm just using the same compound um, to cover a, a jig back. So you can see on the, on the hook in front of me, this is a size 14 Hanek 450BL with a 3.8 mil tungsten bead. All I've done is run a layer of thread down the hook, added a drop of super glue on there and um, fixed a, uh, a, a jig back, tungsten jig back, um, the wrong way around basically on the hook. Um, so that's an incredibly heavy pattern that will come out just around about a gram in weight, possibly a little bit more, so it gets down really quickly. Um, it's up to you how you kind of attach the jig back onto the hook. It doesn't need to be particularly secure at this point because uh, what I'm doing now is covering the whole thing with araldite which makes the uh, the body rock solid, um, so it's going no way, nowhere rather. Um, so if you've got, uh, you can use this or you can use epoxy resin or UV resin. However, however you normally attach a, a jig back onto a hook is absolutely fine. So in this case, as I say, just covering the uh, whole body in araldite. Doesn't look particularly pretty at this stage, but you'll see in a minute when the, uh, the araldite dries, it dries um, really close to the, uh, the jig back so you can hardly see it it just leaves a transparent film that's absolutely rock solid all over the jig back which is really neat handy to do these up in batches so i'm doing a batch of six at this point in time but uh, typically i'll do a batch of 12 or or more as you can see these are the compounds i've been talking about so yeah if your uh, meter powder is uh is not enough for you then there's, there's plenty more powders for you to play around with these are lead weight powders Loads of different colours available, different textures, as you can see, different tones between the gravelly um, type textures. So I've just gone for a, a combination here, which looks like uh, what a case Callis would in, in the rivers that are near me, but you can just change the, uh, the colours to, uh, to suit yourself. Um, so to get this powder to stick, you need to heat the uh, jig back up. So I've just got uh, a pair of hackle pliers there with it over a... Uh, over a cooker and um, I'm not actually putting the jig back into the flame here I'm just holding above it just to heat it up gently and when you put that into the powder itself you can see it starts to stick to it just hold it again above the flame and it'll start to melt it on there and you just build up the uh, coating bit by bit a um, couple of bits of advice one um, don't use expensive hackle pliers like what I am here just grab a pair of old pliers that you've got lying around so you're not getting a load of uh, powder onto your hackle pliers uh, two if you've got a small paintbrush that's really handy just to uh, keep brushing away the powder off the bead so it doesn't get covered in the in the powder coating um, and you don't necessarily need to use a cooker you can use a, a, a lighter um, does the same job really. So you can just see I've just been sprinkling it on bit by bit just to build up the coating until you're happy that the entire body has been coated in the powder and as you can see as it heats up it goes to a shiny finish so it melts the uh, the plastic type material around the jig back creates a nice uh, profile which is really slick it gets down really quick um, as well as it's been a particularly heavy fly it's it's, it's nice and slick to uh, break through the, the water. Once you're happy that you've got the, uh, the entire jig back coated, just pop it into a cup of cold water and the dry, absolutely rock solid, as you can see. And that could be fished as it is with, uh, with a couple of flies either side of it. Um, but in this case, I've just uh, added a, a nice collar on there and a little bit of Tommy fly. It wouldn't be a, a, a Piscari fly session without some Tommy fly in there somewhere. But um, as you can see, you could change the bead color to create a, a nice callus pattern. 
just by using uh, different colour beads, so perhaps a green or, or white bead at the head um, rather than um, the, the gold bead. And um, yeah, the, uh, the part of shackle shackle on there gives the nice interpretation of legs. Um, so you can get quite uh, close copy CAS patterns, which um, are really effective to be to be used in, in fishing. So um, if you have any questions, just uh, just ask in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll reply back to them. Cheers, guys.